Yeah. Welcome to the TuckCast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service. Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service has three convenient locations to serve you. How many, Dale? Three. Three Depot Street, Bryson City, North Carolina. 530 West Main Street, Silva, North Carolina. And 110 Depot Street, Waynesville, North Carolina. Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service is your number one stop prior and after your epic fly fishing adventure in Western North Carolina. Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service proudly carries industry-leading brands such as Sims, Orvis, Corkers, Sage, Rio, Scientific Anglers, Hatch, Nautilus, Lampson, Fish Pond, Scott Fly Rods, Echo, Umpqua, Hairline, Nature Spirit, Peak, Norvice, plus a large selection of flies and streamers. Check out www. Dot tuckflyshop.com for stream flow information, book a lesson or guided trip, or even shop for your favorite Tuckasegee Fly Shop gear. Follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasegee Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and on YouTube at Tuckasegee Fly Shop. Here in our Silva shop today, we have Bobby, the Bearded Wonder Bennett, Coach Dell Diesel Collins, and I'm your host, Shannon Big Mess Messer. Did I lock the door? I don't know. I better go lock it. Man. I guess if somebody comes in, we'll know. Uh, take your headphones off first, please. Thank I'm you my very much. Stick while we're uh, that's right. That's got to sell those flies. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah, man. Whammo. Whammo. We got special guests. We do have a special guest. I was going to let y'all introduce uh, this, this special guest. I know who he is. I know what he does. It's going to be a great one because we, we all, this is so important to everything we do in life. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Right? I think everybody does checks this almost daily. Daily, right? probably multiple times a day. Yeah. So Dale, who is it? Who's it? Today who's we have fella? Preston Jacobson of local Yokel Weather. All right, Preston, with us in the studios, and thanks for coming, Preston. Man, hanging out hey with guys, us. Thanks for having me. So we'll uh, we'll we'll dive into a, a little bit of weather. Weather's really just wind, right? Oh man, now I'm just frozen. I'm just I'm I'm Yeah, we told him we talked for intro. ten minutes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Jeez. thought we were done. You were recording already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he remembered to hit record this time. I did. It's red we'll and it's it. at two forty five and counting. Thank you. No, I hadn't even cracked the bourbon yet, so we're not ready to start Perfect. asking Perfect. questions. Absolutely. Guess, we'll let yeah. you slide on that one. Yeah. So Yeah. What'd y'all gotta talk about? Anything exciting? Well, so Brian on bourbon a few weeks ago sent us uh some special bottles. Yep. So, totally looks like old school medicine bottles. Um, but Bryant, um, he he does reviews on really rare bourbons. So, he sent us an incredible, incredible uh, gift package there of some bourbons to try. And today, we've got Russell's Reserve Single Barrel, 110 proof, nine years, nine months. There you go. Very nice. Nine years. It might be good. ten months now. I mean... I mean, it's been a while. No, so. I mean, how good is it, though, if they're passing on it? It's just you and me. I know, right? Yeah. I can't believe this, man. <laughs> I've got to eat. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I've got to eat. Oh, I see we got I had, <laughs> this is, oh, it looks awesome. got a little, like, <laughs> dropper like, thing Make there. sure that you don't pour That's too right. much. I had, I, I got to say, man, this past weekend, I had I had several different types of bourbon. Oh, so you drank too much is what I, you're saying. I did. I didn't drink too much. I drank just right. It doesn't pour with that thing in it. I guess, yeah. That's Once like he sealed it up, man. It's a good weekend like a, for it, weather-wise. I had probably, and, and I'll probably get snobbed at at this, but I had Preston, a... Well, I can't even talk about weather. Y'all talk about I, I had a... I'm just going to, like, background comment. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> Bourbon yeah, caramel milkshake. The air temperature was about 48. It was dangerous. There's a little bit of fog rolling in the background. About uh, if, if you'd have drunk about 12 of those, there would have been a big fog. <laughs> oh, no, that was when the earthquake <laughs> came about. We were moving milkshakes. back and forth. Structural <laughs> damage. I mean, like, they were so... I only had one, but I'm thinking like, you know what? If if you you could have kept going, it would have been real dangerous and the fog would have moved in. Probably. It's like Dale with his dozen donuts. Mm -hmm. Hey, at least yeah. I don't smash them together to make them sick. Yeah, but, but the milkshakes weren't like... <laughs> <laughs> That's this is why I'm on the outside looking into the joke. <laughs> That's the new math, man. <laughs> now, one, of, one of our employees told us, uh, he'll probably hear this and laugh. He told me that this is the tip of the day. You you get a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts and you stack two on they gotta each other. They got to be hot. They got to be hot, hot and ready. 
So you you stack two on each other and you smash Relative it down. Humidity and then it's like only eating six. It's like welding, right? You, <laughs> you're changing the chemistry of the donut. You're you're sealing it. That molecular structure. Yeah. Awesome. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. All right. So here's the mm -hmm. Russell's mm -hmm. Reserve. You yep. know, the only downside is you don't get the of the bottle. Right. Where's the cue? Well, I, d I did it earlier. No. I did it earlier. What that do you think? Nice intro. That was a beautiful yeah. intro. Well, there, there, there's more in there. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's going to stay there. That's true, too. <laughs> but there's more. Excellent. Good aroma. Yeah. Kind of a smoky hint to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff, huh? But it's, you know, depending on where it's setting at in the You're 21, right? The house. It's like <laughs> Michael Scott. It's got a smoky afterbirth. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can... <laughs> They definitely got them barrels, right? Big fan of The Office. I'll yes. drop a lot of yeah. those for those who there don't you know. Go. You, got that, you, go. uh, 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 you know, season number four, ep episode one. I will, the Michael Scott yeah. fun run. Internally, I'm saying don't freak them out. Don't, don't freak <laughs> them out. <laughs> the fun run. Uh, well, wait, Bobby's had an exciting week uh, with law enforcement. Yeah, man. I'm a doing Tell my us a little job. about that, man. If you do something bad, they come for you. <laughs> bad That's boys, what I can bad tell boys. you. What you gonna do? Bobby called the cops. They said, "Stay here, stay here." <laughs> and for God's sake, son, <laughs> don't remind, play with yourselves. Remind me to slap your mama when I get home. <laughs> you ever seen Smoking the Bandit? Yeah, but so hold on. You had an experience? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? I, I get it, was, it but like it was, now I'm a little worried. Yeah. Well, you know. So yesterday, me and Shannon were working here together, and uh, I don't know what was about two thirty. Shannon goes, "Man, there's a gap in the fly reels." And because we got them on a shelf. In the display. And uh, a couple months ago, we had some problem with some meal, reels going missing. We and have so meals go missing all the time. Meals, too. Yeah. Meals go missing all the time. And uh, on wheels. so <laughs> I was like, well, that's weird. So we went and looked, and Shannon found a box of a reel that wasn't on the shelf anymore. And we were pretty sure it was there earlier. So I went and looked on the cameras and found the dude. And called the cops, and it was one of those like, yeah, this will never get taken care of. So uh, the cop came back in today. He got him. You want me to tell the whole story? Yeah, yeah tell the whole good. story, yeah, man, because this right. this is like. So this <laughs> this is this you is drew me in without without, shut without, it down. <laughs> without any it's names. No storms in the southeast. <laughs> Southern snow and goes here one day, gone the next. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, this this gentleman's on probation. So he called the. Uh, he he assumed he knew he was who he was because he's arrested him before. So he called the probation officer, showed him the video. He said, "Yeah, that's him." And he said he had a mask on when he was in here, which obviously that's no, a normal thing now with with COVID. And he said, "Are you 100 percent sure it's him because he's got a mask on?" He's like, "Oh yeah, it's definitely him. That's those are the same clothes he was wearing in court this morning." <laughs> Stay classy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Nuts. He said. He said. He said. When was the video taken? And the cop told him it was about one thirty is when the video was taken. He's like, well, that's when they recessed for lunch. So he must have walked from the courthouse downtown, stole the reel, and went back to the courthouse. And the cop said, oh, so he's still at the courthouse. He said, yeah, he should be. <laughs> so they go up there, and sure enough, man, he's in the courthouse, which means w when he arrested him, he still had the reel on him, which means he had to go through the metal detector and take the reel out of his pocket, put it in the tray. <laughs> Which walk is normal for Silver Courthouse, for <laughs> yeah. those who don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With with a price tag on it. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, I don't yeah. know. He may have taken. He a may have taken a price tag off. But, you know. <laughs> so, anyways, um, as he arrested him, I guess he mentioned a couple things about being on camera. I don't know what exactly the cop told him, but he confessed to stealing the ones two months ago. <laughs> so, so, anyways, yeah, he's uh, he's getting it. It seems like he probably hit a couple other businesses and had a few other things. You know, them. without that camera, though, he had the perfect alibi. He did, uh, yeah. yeah. I was without that court. camera, I was in court all day, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he's I got gotta to say, I mean, homeboy walked all the way down the hill from the courthouse. I now that's about a mile. It's, right? it's not, it's not the library up here on top of the hill anymore. I, you've got a weather station there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not that one. This the Jackson County, the new courthouse, it's the judicial justice, justice, justice center, justice center, justice center, the justice center. over yeah. here. And um, I mean, that's a downhill walk. Then you walk in it. That dude, he come in here not out of breath. I mean, if I had to be, I bet. <sighs> Where's your reels? Oh, he's limping. <sighs> he, he did have a limp. <laughs> well, did he drop a line in Scott's Creek? <laughs> <laughs> Which he is did. illegal. He, he that broke a law. Yeah, so he probably was broke, walking around. Broke. I was like, man, this is a good place to fish. No <laughs> other place. <laughs> Oh my so, god! Yeah, that's the uh, excitement of Silva this man, week. I mean, that's like national dumb crook news right there. Yeah, to take stuff that you stole to the courthouse while you're. 
there to be in court for something else or something that she else. probably did wrong, mm-hmm. which yeah. I don't know what he was there for, but I imagine it was probably theft. Breaking the law. <laughs> <laughs> I would say there was some reason <laughs> oh that he was supposed to be at court that day. Woo. That so, was a story. Yeah. 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 Huh. Oh but my gosh! Anyways, because yeah. of the amount of stuff that he confessed have to stealing on this podcast, <laughs> we, we just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> I- if you steal, you have to steal a certain monetary amount for it to be a felony, and he has stolen enough from us for it to be a felony. Gotcha. So, yeah, he, he crossed yeah. that threshold, and so. he, he confessed to it, and he's on video, which probably means on. only like one extra night in jail. Right? Yeah, I don't know what it means for. I now wonder what that threshold is. Yeah, don't yeah. you want to know? Yeah, I'm sure it's probably state I think to state. He told me it's like sixteen hundred bucks. Yeah. So from the Somewhere, last one, he crossed over. Was like, you know what? I'm tired of filing these things. Sixteen hundred, <laughs> raise the bar. Like, <laughs> raise, <laughs> it. Yeah. raise it. Yeah, it's pretty. So, uh, pretty arbitrary. So, anyways, that's that's the story of the week. The excitement. Hopefully, that's all we have this week. Yeah. I hope there's no more. I hope excitement. so too, man. Yeah. I guess he wants to go see his buddy. Yeah. So. He's gonna go spend some time. Anyways, outside in the playground. I hope so. Yeah. So we gonna talk about weather? Yeah, man. It's supposed um, to get cold this weekend. I did yeah. see that. Sorry, yeah, folks. Snow. Chance what of snow. What is the latest y'all have ever seen snow in a season? Uh, uh on the here in town. Yeah, like I mean, uh, for I mean, me, I've seen it, was it on May seventeenth. Like, yeah, I'd I had say to go to the Parkway, and it was token flakes, but that's the I latest. Think, um, May third was the latest years, I've seen it. Two yeah. years ago, it was May. I think. Yeah, it was like right at the beginning, but it wasn't in town. It was. You know, yeah. above three thousand. But we had a least. dusting. I feel like in weather. You know, let's let's define here. I, I don't count a token flake of snow. To me, a snow, snow. A snow is an accumulation. Shannon's the how big a boy are you? Can I shut off Shannon's cord like to my <laughs> mic? I mean, do I have to hear this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do that. No, I'm not. No, yeah, no, no. I mean, it, but but I mean, no, that's just that's a, the difference. Is what do you? Determines a snow. Is okay. it a is I'd it say, a token flake? He's, he's probably got an answer. Well, I mean, is the raindrop frozen? <laughs> so it it can be snowing, and we can record that in an observation. Uh, accumulation is trace. So think of literally probably five flakes visible on the surface of the ground. Trace. Gotcha. Okay. You know, the tenth of an inch is a dusting. When you hear dusting, that's a tenth of an inch. Um, Interesting. But for most, it's probably going to be a coating, right? Okay. A, a skiff. Yeah, um, a snow, but a skiff um, of snow. Skiff. See, exactly. I would have thought a Bob trace. Ross word. <laughs> I would have thought a trace was the dusting. Like it kind of covers covers the grass. Dusting is almost grayish, right? You can still see. Um, no traces. Literally, just they have a snowboard, right? Um, a two by uh, who is a they? two by who two. is they? We don't generalize on this podcast. Well, we're going to leave them as they. It's mysterious, <laughs> magical. Who is this they? Right? That's the problem. It's <laughs> what's the ombudsman yeah. on here? <laughs> the National Weather Service. Noah. Okay. Uh, they ha- they'll have a snowboard um, when they're doing official observations, and if flakes are able to land and stick, are we talking about trace. the one you ride snowboard? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's ocean. literally a two by two. Sorry, I'm okay. a nerd. I'm laughing over here. <laughs> um, so Charlotte is a really interesting example of trace counting because 136 years of recorded weather history, Charlotte has recorded at least a trace of snow. And there have been seriously? some really seriously some really bad winters in Charlotte. Hot thunderstorms etc but yeah. yeah trace always so interesting interesting well that lasts i don't know but that's a long record that is what's the i mean is that like nationally? i think they average six down there yeah and it's been going down over the third year yeah and i say charlotte like i care that's just a really cool stat for them so, yeah 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 my, my obsession is waynesville to robbinsville to highlands really just anywhere in southwest north carolina yeah gosh cool. man we might have to have you on again I'm just sitting there thinking, like, I got a million questions. When I was when I was in second grade, man, I was dead yeah. set on being a weatherman. I get up in front of the class and I cut out the newspaper um, weather forecast, and I get up there today, high seventy four, <laughs> partly sunny sky. You know, the second grader reads right. That's awesome. I mean, that was me. I'm so sure his parents were like, okay, so we're gonna steer in this way. <laughs> I, you know, Alex. Well, so no, here, here's what it come down to. Go, do I realize I don't have hair. So you didn't want to be on TV? Weatherman. Well, back out, in the 90s, of, that was an issue. Man, nowadays, it's not a Yeah, thing. I mean, Cantori, yeah. he broke through that wall. Exactly. There you so, go. but I, what what it came down to was weathermen move all around the country. Mm-hmm. And Until they I'll, get, like, the good job, right? right? And, and 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 I I wanted to be, you know, Frank Deal down there in High Point, Greensboro. That guy, you know, Van Denton, been the weatherman for 30 years. Kids grow up watching him, right? But you got to move around a lot of places. And I, I didn't want to move around a lot of places. So, 
What about you? Why ain't you on the weather? So I'm now understanding this more and more. Let's talk about the weather with Preston. This is just a childhood issue you're trying to work <laughs> yeah. through. Oh, yeah. totally. Yeah. I mean, we're in the right spot, yeah. and we're drinking yeah. bourbon. Dude, you know, I, I, funny. Yeah. I can't tell you how jealous yeah. I am of you. How many years you say you've been doing this? 15. But so he's been stalking you for 15 years. This has been an obsession for 15. I, I've been doing it right for probably about 10. Okay. You know, at first it was just a blog with a few things, and I thought I, my shit didn't stink, but <laughs> it did. Man, it did. <laughs> no, it was all born out of um, frustration. You know, I weather channel and AccuWeather and this was around 05 so websites were becoming more and more popular with um a way to get you know your your news and your your forecast in particular long range and i would see an inch for silva an inch for cololine flurries nothing yeah just frustration building building so by um i guess sophomore junior year I just had enough and started doing enough education on it to be able to forecast with what was available. Yeah. There were no stations around, so I started putting in stations. I think that was the biggest driver to people with traffic Yeah, was we filled in the gaps. Um, gosh, I could go on, on for days and days and so many tangents, but one of my biggest frustrations is that this area, southwest North Carolina, has got to be one of the most unique weather spots. It is. I know mm -hmm. it is. In the east, perhaps in the nation – Definitely the southeast, but it is the most underrepresented area pertaining to data. Yeah, um, pertaining to a network across all aspects: temperature, precip, wind. So even with like the national park, they don't like no, keep and a so, good record of any of that, really. And 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 there are many networks around. You know, we have our own here in North Carolina with the Climate Office, uh, EcoNet, a fabulous one, and those are great because they're funded to last fifty to hundred years. Okay. A dime a dozen, we have people with personal weather stations. Yeah, I got right? one. Yeah. Delta. I don't know if you Man's have it in your one. garage or if you have it in your bathroom. There's no telling. I don't know. Right, yeah. yeah. But um, And so we can gain some information out of that. But um, official reports or official event, you know, recording of that event, Southwest is a gaping hole. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating. Yeah. So that's, that's continued to be my drive, and that's why I'm going to probably pivot away from forecasting to – Filling in the gaps. Pinnacle Park, we're putting in a weather station up there on the top. Yeah. Um, How's that going, by the way? Like how Fully funded. Okay. Um, beyond. And, and so how I've did got to respect out to the donors, uh, the don uh, donors yeah. um, to say, hey, I'm going to probably keep this extra money and, and roll it into a second one if we can. You know, yeah. if not, okay. we'll, we'll give money back. But um, yeah, it's fully funded. We just met with the uh, the board and Jay and those guys and um, or the, that, the, those members, rather. Mm -hmm. Um and they gave me some ideas on a spot. We're not going to put it at Pinnacle Peak. Uh, we're a little worried sure. about traffic and yeah. interference with all that. But, um, gosh, the Plot Balsams be the first one around that. You know, we have stations at Mount Lynn Lowry, um, just below it, off Rosemount. Rosemont. Yeah. Rosemont. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to work our way down. Yeah. I'm getting a little serious. Let's so how, no, how no, do we get some good. This is good. This. One thing yeah. I was wanting to talk about, we did. How do, how do we get something on the Tucka CG? So this is really cool for you all in particular. Um you know, Alex at Saison, we always were friends for quite a while, ever since, I mean, he sold the first beer back in Cullowee. Yeah. My biggest project with him that never came to fruition, we, I mean, we were just months away, although it was more of a resurgence idea, until the fire happened for him. But we were going to put uh, the Cullowee station there. Mm -hmm. We were going to relocate it. At the same time, drop in a water temp sensor. So he could play on deals that if it, it we could statistically tell you when and what the frequency may be on average any given summer that if it got above 90 the next following day margaritas were half off because north carolina you can't do happy hour <laughs> it's a 24-hour sale right yeah so for those who are wondering man this guy is really obsessed with business i also am an entrepreneur and i run bookkeeping and accounting so my other obsession is figuring out how to way to incorporate the weather into business so for you all in particular right it's just a an awareness factor to your clients or probably preparation for your day for folks like yeah. NOC or Tuck Outfitters, it's an actual kind of like bait. Yeah. The temperature's cool, the air is hot. Or the temperature's warmer than you thought, it being late late summer and people usually yeah. bow out. So. so being that the restaurant over there burnt down, yeah, are, are you still thinking of doing that? I, I, I don't know what they're... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people who are interested. I mean, he, even Barry on the river, right, at his uh, Tuck Photoshop. We yeah. Were, we were deck, I guess. Down on there. the gorge? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there are, there are a lot of people who I think would be receptive to some person dropping in a sensor. Um, and we can definitely look into that. Funding, they're getting cheaper and cheaper, yeah. whether it be the sensors, the stations, or the way to communicate. I think if you if you did it and you needed the funding, 
Like you put it out to the fly fishing community, I bet people will donate because there's people that are going to drive two hours to come and they'd like to see it. Sure, like, much like you do like, with is your, this uh, worth coming with your you stream flows, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and yeah, I, I, I understand that thing. from the butter community, right? And so I, I come from you know, college back at Western, where everybody was climbing, boating, fishing, camping. So I saw a lot of these weather connections. It touches mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, and so are all these little what I call weather triggers, um, little ways that you can trigger the engagement of a customer or just someone who you might want to make aware of this situation, that this is a really beautiful area. Um, I kind of fight that a little bit too, because I don't want to draw in the whole world to yeah. Jackson County, right? I don't think sometimes we can handle our own infrastructure. Yeah, that's right. Um, but it's a uh, double-edged sword, and it's somewhat chicken and the egg, right? With, with oh, TDA yeah. and Absolutely. nothing against Nick and all those folks over there that promote what you all yeah. sell. Um, it's just too that uh, sometimes we can create too much awareness. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you. I don't you. even know why I started that, but that sounded no, really no. wise and smart. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it is, man. It is. So I've got a big question here. Dale knows what I'm about to ask. I meant to warn you about this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, so this I, one I walk in, and we just start chatting. Me, me and Bob in particular, we start chatting. So yeah. I'm going to preface, preface I had this no with, prep. with uh, I don't want to be political, but. If it's hard enough for the weatherman, <laughs> he said, "But that's over." Yeah. <laughs> but, however, yeah, keep going. If it's hard enough for them to predict what things are going to be in three, four, or five days from now, like yeah. it's it's tough, right? To to get it very accurate. How can they predict temperatures for the Earth or any area? Oh, okay. From thirty years from now, you okay. know how they they keep saying things are going to go up two degrees, yeah, or whatever. So two two different camps in that real quick. We'll we'll slice out the weather, but really what we're talking about. The, you know, reading between the lines here is climate, right? Yeah. Climate yeah. change, perhaps, in particular. Which climate's always changing. Like, yeah, it, but it has and, before okay, but, uh, what uh, they let's call let's the rephrase, carbon stuff, well, let's, right? let's rephrase climate change to maybe something more actionable, global warming. There you go. Okay, yeah. cool, right? Yeah. Before I get into any of that, know that I worked 12 years as a sustainability person in universities, and all I did was count greenhouse gas emissions from my main goal. Oh, this is a good Excellent. Question. Was yeah. to reduce, because... I believe in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so know that I am biased from that mm-hmm. point of view. Right? Perfect. No, that's, that's fine. Man. That's fantastic. Okay. You're at, you're at um, least educated in yeah. it more than I'm, the general public. I'm would educated be. in the sense of I know that. God, this is so silly for people to to be so hyperbolic about something that seems to me to be so simple. The marriage of the environment and economics goes hand in hand with with this movement, and it is one. Um, and with any movement, you'll have resistance. Is this movement something that we should all sacrifice for? That's, I think, where the people kind of opinions sway, yeah. right? Because sacrifice also directly to either ties into your belief or where you've gotten your information. We are what we consume as well. So because I follow the science, and it's not so much... The projections, the one and a half, the two, the two and a half degrees Celsius, global temperature rise. Mm -hmm. What has happened is an indicator for me that it's going to continue. And it's not a global shutdown. It is just the have-nots will get worse and the haves will become continued richer. And so that's my frustration with it. That's my personal drive is that the the juxtaposition, the socioeconomic differences are just going to be insane let's get back to the uh, the weather of it all the sun the climate um, yes things are r- uh, rapidly warming uh they're warming in, in certain parts of the world faster than others think the poles alaska in particular but do we know if a tree falls in the forest if we're not there to watch it or see it afterwards right so we also have a lot of data gaps yeah and we also have in my opinion a very young history of the climate. So that's what and I've so always now, thought. And yeah. that, well, I mean, that is tied to the weather station, right? 136 years in Charlotte with a trace record. Someone was there. They were recording. We have ways through carbon dating, et cetera. We can deduce down the most impactful thing that we, we know, and that's carbon. So we can go back hundreds of thousands of years. So mm-hmm. we know that things come and go in cycles. <clears throat> um, but beyond all that, Let's just say if you don't, this is more outside of weather. Beyond all that, if you don't believe it, if you fully are against it, that you think that this is manufactured, this is a joke, this is misguided, um, et cetera, et cetera, 
like, what's the obsession with coal? What's the obsession with gas? What's the, you know, I, I drive a truck. I get it. I'm a hypocrite, but there's, there's gotta be a desire for the other, but just to stick it to that just kills me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Plus two, man, come on, think about it. Electric truck, you're on a forest road, going to your, your session with your client and all you hear is the gravel and the crunch of your tire and the small whine of the engine. I was about to say that little noise it, it makes, right? <laughs> I used to teach electric vehicles over at Haywood, so I'm even more biased on electric. <laughs> but to get back to the weather, um, you know, I don't even know why or what the original question was. I just got so passionate was, about uh, that global warming if, bit. If it's hard for the oh yes, okay. the weather community, three days versus three days years. versus yeah. thirty years, how can they predict that? So and say in digest years. that. I mean, to each his own. <laughs> Big believer in each his own. I'm probably more libertarian than anything. Whatever you can digest, digest. Right. If your if your concern and your anxiety is built around the next one thousand years, go at it. But man, I can't I, I can't get my head around next week. Okay. And so if if we're gonna be consumed and worry about these things that really we have no control over unless we're willing to step into the game, then I say let it go. Um and so when that comes to models, people obsess over every IPCC report and the new proje projections, et cetera. Let it go and just do your small part. Uh, yeah. The one thing that I have learned, both in business, weather, sustainability, just really anything, is that volume wins out, right? So a thousand little, heck, you know, um, you know, people recycling, um, driving less, you know, eating differently, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, extrapolate that across volume, and it makes a big impact. Mm -hmm. But to say, man, I got to go buy an electric vehicle, I got to go put solar on my house, I got to do these things that are just crippling or life changing. Um, I'm not really for that. Um, that was never my message. It never won out the day. It was always out of sight, out of mind, that one. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did you realize we put solar up? No, we didn't. That's cool. And we just did it, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but getting back to the weather three to five days out, the reason why you have a hard time getting an accurate forecast here, I hear it now, is that population. Yeah. The, the numbers, the, the market is not here to, okay. to, to produce content for. Okay. Yeah. So local yoga weather also filled in the gap. You know, it was local weather for local people. No dog on Jason Boyer and his coverage and those folks over there. I love him to death. He's a great guy. WLOS, um, ABC, or, yeah. 13, right? Yeah. Or Hunter. You know, they, they kind of cover this area down here with Asheville WX, AshevilleWeather.com, Hunter Ward. Um, but it's just so much nuance spread across so many microclimates. Right? Yeah. And it's not even a microclimate, it's micro, it's like an inception issue. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just yeah. go deeper into these hollers and coves and yeah, it, they, they play on each other. No forecast model can capture that. There's no data to input into the forecast model, right, back to the representation issue. Um, so really, it's just more glazing the generalized forecast to your area. Y'all have lived here long enough to know that when someone calls for an inch, you're going to get what? When someone calls for 80 degrees, you know it's going to be 83 yeah. You know, you know, it's going to be 88 in downtown Silva mm -hmm. um, when I can go just what? And you're at five minutes and yeah. drops yeah. several degrees. degrees. Yeah, not even. Yeah. So, you know, I used to run up Kings Mountain just to cool down a couple of degrees. But um, yeah, so the nuance, I think, is the issue in terms of coverage here, population. Where's the money? Yeah. Where's the market? Um, and a lot of the people, too, are still on TV or print, surprisingly. I don't know what you all do for marketing, but and we're still finding that a lot of people are off digital, locally rather. Yeah, mm -hmm. locally. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, you know, talking about the population, I remember when we first uh, got in our house there in Webster, we had some really bad storms coming. Tornado. We actually had tornado warnings here, and was watching. This is back when the Weather Channel had some credibility. I feel like it was worth having. <laughs> uh, they didn't show the ice road truckers all the time, right? Yeah. So. Um, but, you know, they had, like, Webster and Silva and Bryson City on the Jim Cantori's map, and he had his storm tornado storm prediction guy talking, and, and he's talking, you know, yeah, these people in the you know this area need to take cover, a lot of that. And Jim says, that's all just Nantahala National Forest in there. Go to somewhere that's got people. Dude. Now, I was, like, I, done with this. I was, yeah. like, done with him. I couldn't believe he said that. You know, so but that's his world, Atlanta, yeah. right? His bubble, his people, they yeah. feed him, you know, they're reinforcing whatever he thinks is working. Yeah. You know, let's um, go to some other populated. Not, you know, he has people supporting that notion 
and a paycheck to back it up. Well, it's like sensationalism so, will win. Sensationalism will win, but also, who's going to hear Dale Collins pipe up back then? Yeah, you know, in frustration. So it's also kind of like your frustration is just silence. Right. Too. Yeah, yeah. So there's no counter back. Now, if you told Jim that today, he'd probably be respectful and everything. Yeah, yeah, sure. I and mean, he visits and he talks about the area and he tries to drop some local thing. That was the other thing. I was just joking with people before I came here. The only way I was able to assimilate and to find out a lot about this area was to just drop road names and local spots. <laughs> and I learned one of the best ways to figure out local or not is Warry Hut. Why hut? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't go full yeah. draw. Yeah. For those, I just for those folks know. that don't know, yeah. right. it's yeah. spelled way a on yeah. the road sign. But it's yeah. pronounced Warry Hut. Yeah. But not even properly so. I'm butchering it. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Uh, so, but I have you, respect for him. But no, yeah, he. Um, I call them the Mega Weathers. Sure, right? They're just too big for us. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was so excited when uh, the dude went from Asheville Weather to the Weather Channel. Um, okay. Um, I forget his name now. Not Bob Caldwell. Um, no, no, the no, guy was local. Him. Okay. Um, Brian. No, I don't know. Anyway, he was stud looking dude and got stud got the call to the majors. I mean, <laughs> got called up. He got called. He got the call so, up. But, I forget. I'll, I'll come here. I'll look it up here in a minute. Um, I got Google. <laughs> um, Google it, baby. Google it. <laughs> you know so, you're good when you're a verb, right? You made it. That's right. Yeah. The um, that's sensationalism, sensationalism in weather. Um, when I've, I've 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 seen a notice watching the radar, and I watch probably three different radars when when I'm out on the water, and it seems like the it's subjective, right? You can change the color on a approaching rain cloud to make it look more intense than it actually is. Cause I feel like they'll have like, yeah, right now it's kind of cloudy outside. So that means it's light green over us right now. Right. Yeah, but they were able to sell that color a month ago. Man. <laughs> you so, know? I mean, all right. So there's, there's that, there's that side of, of sensationalism in radar technology. And then I wonder about sensationalism and just even the, the approaching storms. So, yeah, Talk real quick on the ra- real, real quick on the radar, it's all the same, right? The government we pay for radar mm-hmm. towers, um, or Doppler radar, excuse me. They were just upgraded nationwide a dual pole um, that took about fifteen years. Um, you know, so we have radar going one way, but also going vertically too. We can oh, we can okay. we can three. That's where they show measuring the, the top correlation the coefficient, right? right. Yeah. So we can we can see. Ooh, correlation. The the the, the, na- the nature of what is falling now, not just ping. Something's falling, and was yeah, it a hard okay. ping? Was it a soft ping? But now we can kind of grasp it, if you will, okay. and see volume, right? I got you know, you. Mass size. Um. So yeah, and so like you know, I, I I use radar scope because that was one of the first on the scene, and there are others like that. I'm trying to get other big players, but radar scope. You know, if you're going to do a radar on your phone, it's all the same, but. Spend the ten dollars for the life of an app or whatever it is, five, ten bucks. I'm sure it's twenty now with inflation, right? And so just <laughs> just spend the money because what you're gonna get are layers. And this is what the operational Mets use. And we can change the tilt. And so our um, well, there's different ones for our region. That's everything too. We we Man, I'm gonna be honest, I understood about five words you just said. Well, good. Yeah, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Yeah, I'm I'm getting a glaze in their eyes. So I've won them. It's over, not just right? the bourbon. <laughs> tilt. Right. Look for the radar. Coral- with tilt. I was I'm still at correlation coefficient. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Knowledge. <laughs> okay. And so you have um, um, Greer is where our radar is located, but mm-hmm. also Morristown um, for Knoxville, if you will, when you look mm-hmm. on the map. And so it's different degree tilts, 0. 0.2, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.8. And so you stretch that tilt over thousands or hundreds of miles, right? It can really go from, you know, zero degree elevation off the ground to 1,000 to two. Where do storms really typically happen? About 5,000 feet, that cloud layer. Uh, where does the temperature change? Really what we call the 850 millibar, mm-hmm. about 5,000 yeah. feet. That's where we see a lot of freezing kind of uh, play come into the um, Yeah, I learned about that this, this winter, right? Um, like, what's when you're the looking at snow maps, 5, usually what you're looking at is the 850 millibar map. Yeah. And what you want to see is that zero degree line yeah. or, or colder because that means about 5,000 feet it's snowing, but Lord knows it can still rain here in the valleys. Yeah. And so the other thing, too, we have to contend with with radars real quick is uh, radar shadows. Um, we have a big problem with shadow issues in this in these valleys. Sure. I was about um, to ask this question. It so, just yeah, yeah, so the escarpment, right, as it comes off the plateau and it comes into the foothills there or the upstate, it just slams. You know, it could be slamming into, I guess, Mount Hardy or Yellow Mountain 
um, or really just anywhere on the plateau, Big Ridge in particular. And we just, in the Cullowee, you have to run that at 0.6 or 0.8, tilt three or four to really capture a thunderstorm to see what's going on, the movement, the size, the growth, the decay. Um, and so that, I think is, you know, sensational because graphics come out, accessibility. Do people know what they're doing? Probably not, um, but it's still cool to have that. Sure. Right? And yeah. so also remember where, where, if your storms are coming out of the west, use Knoxville, Morristown rather, if they're coming out of the south, southwest, southeast, east, Greer, right, GSP. Um, okay. Because your source of the radar is going to be better. And flip between the two. You'll see. Sure. You'll see a difference. So in when detail. you say spend, spend the $10, what is that towards? <clears throat> Only Do you on? not have radar scope? No, I don't. Never heard of it. Never heard of My it. My phone's over yonder. I'm writing it down. <laughs> I'm going to bring back a throwback. Bro, do you even lift? <laughs> 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 I work out. Uh, radar scope. I'm going to age Spend 10 myself. bucks. It's or cool. um, or 15, so, whatever it is. Now. And so here, real quick, I just hit this button down here. Mm -hmm. I'm showing him a fancy, fancy app. Play with that and see all the layers. There's nothing really in. Man, that looked like a map. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I can uh, I can sell it to you for five dollars right now. Yeah. Do you have stock in this? Huh? <laughs> yeah. No, no, just snake oil. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. But um, and so getting back to the sensational of just weather in general. Yeah. Yes, you have a lot of these. I think it might have been maybe you, Shannon, earlier said in your basement type, you know, um, armchair type meteorologist. And let me tell you, man. I started that. All yeah. right. It wasn't <laughs> Preston. I wasn't like the Genesis or the, the, you know, the nucleus. It, huh? No, I mean, but I was part of the wave. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. At my age and time when I entered this space, if you will, no one existed but Ray's weather. I modeled most everything after him. Ray left his company and sold it. Um, and it's highly lucrative. So that model will continue to look okay. like a new, you know, newspaper pretty much. Okay. Um, but over time, sorry, over time, um, I mean, I built my first website when I was probably nine, eight, wow. right? Mid-90s. So, um, gosh, if you put an eight-year-old now in front of the computer, what are they going to be able to do? Yeah. Podcast, YouTube, everything. So they can, yeah. they can produce. And with the access, and you all can look this up too, pivotalweather.com, all these other clearinghouses for models. Yeah. You, as a layperson, can hop in, spend nothing or ten dollars a month to get the professional models and make your own determination right you can you can kind of see where i'm going with this there's a lot of um error in that approach and then you factor in the emotional component why are these mainly kids and when i say kids you know i'm not that old but usually you have 14 to 20 year olds on this and all they've known is social media and that follower is life right yeah. that, that, that that the count mm -hmm. is your your status quo so to speak and so you have this emotional tie-in to where I need the clicks, I need the follows, I need the sensationalism, um, the see, engagement. Hey, that Russell's rare just got you. Yeah, well, it's more dry mouth, caught mouth over here. I need water. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, with that being said, though, the professionals do tamper that down. We yeah. we we kind of call out the the weeds, so yeah. speak through time. But we also Reed Timmer is a great example. Folks like you know Storm Chasing Legend, he'll nurture and mentor a little bit. Um, but yeah. You are what you consume, and if you're consuming your your weather content from Facebook, and you get burnt once, twice, three times, you're still following. I mean, yeah, yeah. You be you, and you stay in that corner because I don't know if I want you as a follower. It's like, how do you convince someone that that can't be convinced either? Yeah. So. Well, I mean, it's like I read the headline here. Um, on I just just went to weather.com because I want to find this dude that was oh, on the here? WLOS latest on winter storm. Quinlan to become bomb cyclone. Like it's like, oh snap. That shit is the bomb, dude. I mean, that that's that's some I know that's like some exciting weather stuff happening there, you know, in the in the storm. Um, but it's like, you know, if, if we're here in Silva and we see that, it's like, oh man, I need to go get some milk. Red milk, baby. Red milk. <laughs> Red milk. <laughs> so yeah. yeah I mean, there, I, and there are people trying to figure out how many times can we sell them this oh, yeah. before, I got they, before they figure it out. But um, that was the other thing, too, when Weather Channel, which really is now the weather company, which really is IBM, which is, I mean, they're not even their own entity anymore. Yeah. Um, um, when they started naming winter storms, that was a big scandal in the weather industry. Yeah. I mean, I wonder it was how that sacrilegious, was right? Because that that's hurricanes, man. Right. And now you have a private entity coming into this space that's usually traditionally been funded 
grown within the government sphere, not control, but just kind of like they nurtured this whole industry. There's some, you know, respect due. Yeah. Uh, but here we are, I think now, what, five, eight years later, it's the norm. There you go. But also that being said, if the private sector can kill it, go for it. Yeah. Oh, my God. And there are some models out there, the Swiss model or others, the IBM model, that are extremely accurate, um, but they're extremely expensive. Um, oh, okay. And so you're starting to see private come into play mainly for insurance needs or yeah. you know, operational forecasting. But you're seeing like FedEx or UPS getting those. Yeah, right? aviation is another big sector, a- agriculture, that kind of thing. So Interesting. Yeah. So how does we, – we always get phone calls of, hey, it's showing 80% rain. This is good. I'm probably not going to come fish Friday because it's showing 80% rain. And then we always give them the thing, hey, man, just because it's 80% rain means it might – Poured in downtown Silva, but over towards Bryson City. You That's the the one that looks I out mean, the window. For a small fee, I'll show you where that twenty percent spot is. Right? <laughs> okay, it's it's like the weather version of y'all's honey hole. Right? This is my twenty percent. That's yeah. great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So so and it's all it's all paired up to like you know if it's a twenty percent showing, you know, I get twenty cents on that dollar. Right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know when to stop, so I'll stop now. This is gold. But you know, right? I was. It sounds like you know rather already. But for those who don't, you know, there's science factoid knowledge. We need to have some kind of like no, 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 no in the background here. Yeah. Right. Um, when you hear fifty percent, what do you think going to happen or not? Or coverage area? All right. It's coverage area. Okay. But what coverage area? Yeah. It's usually <clears throat> born out of weather forecasting office WF WFOs. Ours is Greer. That's where the radar is. Morristown. Right. You see where all this goes. Their coverage area includes us, includes Charlotte, includes a little bit of, um, it doesn't touch. Does it go to Blacksburg? Do they overlap? No, it that stops part? at Avery. Okay. It stops at Banner Out. Okay. And, that's and then Blacksburg, Blacksburg picks that. And then um, Morristown shares a little bit with us. We're, we're, we're the stepchild, man. Nobody wants us. Yeah. I mean, not, hey, if your stepchild's out there, I don't dog on you, but nobody really wants Southwest North Carolina, it seems. Um, and so, I'm sorry, I was totally forgot where I was going with that. We're talking about 80%. The, the percentage of rain podcast. Chance. I'm supposed to be fluid here. And so that's their coverage area. But why percentage? Who cares if your coverage area is so big? It's for verification. Yeah. If they're government, they're funded. Who are the funding hawks? They want to know if their money's going to the right place. What do we do? We verify. So if we issue a tornado, we National Weather Service issues a tornado warning. If it if it's verified, that goes well for them. Um, that being said, they're not going to be cut out if they get an F, right? Yeah. But they need to show that they're worth their, their value. And so percentage, if it rained over here, but not over here, and I call for 50%, verified. Yeah, you're good. Right? Check. Okay. Yeah. And so the same uh, thing with, with warnings and watches, et cetera. So, gotcha. um, so it could totally rain all day in Greer, South Carolina, and yeah. here we're not get a drop. And it's, they called for 80%, and we were in the 20% that didn't get anything. And, let, and let's throw this notion of this, like, generational upbringing understanding of percentage and, and for those who know they know and so they have this understanding but now we throw in the mix these independents like local yokel it's their perspective yeah and so if that's not conveyed in the message properly then those who generationally understand percentage to be this um then for me scattered if my perspective was only southwest north carolina then scatter might be half over here whereas those folks that in Greer would look at us and say 100% or yeah. maybe mm. partial. So, you know, we're have also having a communication is to issue from a pointer perspective, too. Yeah. Um, but I think these are all growing pains. Mm. You know, much like with social media and how we've evolved to this point, I think the next decade or so, validation of information, verification, you know, the validity of it all will be the next push. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think this hyperbolic nature of, content can continue on forever yeah um i'll happily bow out at some point but i mean it's got to come to a head people have to be like well, you're wrong i mean yeah i mean I, i've seen so many maps ahead of storms that i just i quit quit looking and it's like i'm just gonna wait and see what happens yeah you i know? wait until it's close and then i look yeah. at the radar and go man we're not getting anything you and know I, like I, you can I, tell i drank the kool-aid hard and i like i Yes, I have been very guilty of producing like five maps and saying this is my final call or whatever. Now, one and done, you know, and it's usually very conservative. Um, and then I love to afterwards, you know, backdoor prop up myself, be like, yeah, I was we pretty, did all right, we did all right. We did all right. <laughs> pretty close. Yeah. We got you know, it. Jason, got did, it. Jason, he might have got like 20%. We so, got 80%. Yeah. 
So if a cow farts in Nebraska, mm-hmm. it'll rain tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. So uh, Mike Bettis. So yeah, looking at his timeline, his name? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. been there for now twenty odd years. Well, I just yeah. I was reading his bio and I was like, my God, I'm old. The vault for that one. So well, I came I came to Cullowee in two thousand one. <laughs> okay. So and left in 06. Um, you but, saw some good years. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I didn't realize. He, yeah, he's been gone. So. Oh, he gone. He gone. <laughs> he gone. I mean, they they actually he's been gone so long that it's like way down here in his bio. Previously, Bettis was chief meteorologist with WLOS in Nashville. Yeah, he removed all. Affiliation with us. He pretty yeah, much he, did. He's, he's big league now. He said, I'm in the big city, buddy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hot Atlanta. Good, so, good. Yeah, he so almost died you. chasing a tornado. So so based on what Preston just said a while ago, if there's an 80% chance of rain, you need to come on and fish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so these are all – these are, and i got some questions for you all, too. I mean, you know, back at you. Uh, Perfect. The way the weather interacts with your day, but not necessarily your day, the fish's day, too, right? I mean, yeah. like, you know, how is the fish playing out in these conditions, overcast, temperature of the air, the water – hits on the water from either a raindrop but it's mm-hmm. also spring and things should be yeah you know popping. um popping whether it be god i was swarmed by something just a few days ago like gnats or popping or something like that um so when we get these quick little warm spells like we had i guess for the past almost two weeks we're kind of cooling back to normal and then we'll get a snap yeah how is that normally played out for you all are you all fishing now i mean are you oh, all yeah. back or what yeah so uh, you know we, we we studied this for a presentation a few years ago with the charlotte group how weather impacts fishing. All the studies on bass. There's there's no studies on trout because That's so bassist. Okay. <laughs> it's it's very bassist. <laughs> That's where you put the <laughs> didn't sh- Yeah. Okay. So th- this it's also tied to um, pre- so obviously pressure. So you got addas right in the water column. So typically trout waters don't even get close to the first atta of 14 mm. feet right in depth. So. Um, there's, there's not much on it for trout. However, um, you can take some of the information from the studies and deduce that trout, just like bass, trout have an air bladder in that linear, linear line, and they're going to react similarly to low pressures the way bass would. So when the low pressure is right over us, that is not good. So they, that, that, that is hard for them to rise up. Yes. Okay. So um, that's a lot of pressure down on that water column. When it's high pressure, trout are happy. They're, they're, they feel free to move about the cabin. Okay, they can take their seatbelt off. They can walk away. out. They, they see that Hendrickson up there on top. They're going to go get it. Okay. Um, but uh, now right before the low pressure comes, it can be really good because they sense the pressure changing uh, steeply. They will eat a lot. Time to hit the buffet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that type of yeah. thing. Yeah. So speak. They're That's going it. to get their milk and bread. That's what's yeah. <laughs> That's exactly That's right. it. They're going to Let's get the go milk get the and bread. I like bread. Bread. Great bread. Yeah. They're good. Very so, nice. that, you know, and, and we've tried to watch it. The best we can tell with just watching pressure on our phones, which we don't even know how accurate that is with those apps that are free. So, like the hunting. <laughs> yeah. Especially. Yeah. I've gotten a few questions from hunters over the years. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it seems to be that whether it's low or high, trout will eat. Obviously, your tactics might change. But it's in the transition zones where they they are not, like in a daily. So, like, um, you know, the sun was out some today. So we had some transitions in pressure today, yeah, right? with the rain moving out. So, yeah. yeah, in those transitions, they're, they're, they're wonky. They don't like the, the fluctuations within a day. So um, let's say, you know, last night we had that front come through early. I guess it was early this morning. Right. Make sure so, you're correct. Right? Yeah. yeah. So um, verified. You got to correct check. yourself. Right. So the pressure's been I'll changing. Check yourself. The pressure's changed from obviously pretty low this morning to probably. I mean, I don't know what our weather is, but yeah, no, it's like typically no, yeah, after a strong front, we're mm-hmm. going to swing right into a high, right? Mm-hmm. So um, it's in that swing that it's not okay. good. So the the bugs will be there, depending on water temperature. But the, the fish, fish just aren't happy. Just aren't yeah. going to take it. A reference George Collin here. This is not to be confused between a Canadian low and a Mexican high. Oh boy! Right? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hippy dippy weather man, look it up. One of my favorite bits on the weather in terms of comedy. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, so how Tonight, do the, it'll be dark? <laughs> how does the mountains affect a system coming through? Because you always see it either break up yeah, or it's got to be stronger. It yeah, it can enhance. Sure. Um, oh man, rabbit hole. And so, uh, you, who lives in Waynesville? No, 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 Webster. 
None of us live. We all live right I was born and raised over there, but over here now, man. But yeah, Waynesville, man. Just get on you, man. Did you go to Pisgah or did you go to Tuscola? I'm Tuscola, man. I got my boy going there in that system soon. Good, good. Yeah, the word avoid Pisgah. I'm dogging on Bethel. The weather in Waynesville is drastically different sometimes than here. And it's literally 20 minutes away. It's the Great Balsams, man. Lord of the Rings, anybody? You shall not pass. Yeah, the Great Balsams, to me, in my mind, every system that we get, you know, wedge, cold air damming. We've heard this before. Um, this is like for us in our area. This is the the bomb cyclone. It's the commonly used phrase: CAD, cold air damming, the wedge. We have high pressure in the northeast, spins, funnels in Clockwise, from the northeast. Right. When we say there's a northeasterly wind, it's coming from the northeast. Man, I feel like you're in front yeah. of the green so, screen right so, now. So, oh yeah. So that was what I was going to ask. Because you know the winds when they say you've got a north wind easterly, or a southerly yeah, yeah. wind. Is it coming? If a it's, southerly wind, is it coming from the south? It's out of the south. Out of the south. Out of the south. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't know why I went out instead of from. From is probably better. I got to check my prepositions mm-hmm. here. But, mm-hmm. um, so you have a high pressure system spinning moisture up against, right? The escarpment, so mm-hmm. Highlands, Toxaway, Hendersonville. Really, what happens though is the great balsams act like the escarpment for our area. They block okay. most everything. I left Waynesville. Just before I came and saw you all, we're still under cloud cover. It's 49, 51 degrees. I come down here, partial, we're sitting some sun, 58, 61. Now, there's a lot of different, a lot of reasons why, but mainly is because the wedge is starting to set up and it's eroding. Or rather, it's eroding, and so we're losing that grip. Um, that's one example of how the Don't mountains... Don't let go! <laughs> that's one example of how the mountains will impact. Um, we also frustratingly have more of our snow, region-wide, occur in what's called northwest flow snow... Yeah. As opposed to out of the south, right? The old yeah. adage, if it's out of the south, it's going to be deep. Um, so moisture, a northwest fetch of air, like this long multi-state kind of pattern of air, if you will, rides from the upper peninsula. So the Great Lakes, by the way, when you step out right here, outside, anywhere, there's water in the air. Water vapor sits in front of us at all times. We just can't see it. So there's water vapor there's water moisture available in this column of air that comes from the Great Lakes. It eventually rides up against the Smokies, the Tennessee line. And what happens is it acts as a sponge. What was there as water vapor gets compressed. Um, warmer air can hold more moisture than colder air, but as it ascends in elevation, increases in elevation, it cools. And so there's also some feeder effects too, some mechanics going on that create the snowfall, the snowflake itself, not just temperature and moisture availability so we get a sponge effect along the tennessee line that's why the plot balsams will be white and silva gets flurries that's why catalucci can get three inches and wayne's will get a dusty um so that's another example and then of course the escarpment the plateau i mean gosh highlands two years ago broke the state or rather their own record at 136 and a half inches of rain oh my god the past four years they've been over 100 inches yeah the past three before that over 110 like you talk about trends global warming or not um, that area, the plateau, if you love rain, that's your spot. And for those who are trying to avoid the heat as things become hotter, that'll be your spot. We've always seen the weather drive real estate or any other decision to move, but it'll probably be more exacerbated with yeah. those that are affected more so than others. Now, will we see climate refugees come to southwest North Carolina? No, but you'll see, as we already have, and we'll continue to see prices continue to skyrocket. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. Hmm. Huh. Man, that's that's. We could that's, do like a five-hour. I mean, this yeah, yeah. absolutely. Y'all, y'all do this in the winter. Yeah, 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 do yeah we, we do it. Year I have a couple of snow guns. We'll bring them out. We'll make some snow for y'all. That's right. You're working you, on doing that. We'll, with, we'll, uh, we'll do it. We'll do it in a little session like that. Yeah. You you uh you did that down in Innovation, right? Yeah. Um. um but it also Skylar snowed that weekend. <laughs> Man, yeah, you can't control it, and so like, every client I get, it's it's got to be previce with like, yo, it, uh, it, it, I can't control it. Now, right. that being said, I right. daydream quite a lot. You give me about you know a thirty thousand square foot warehouse somewhere in Asheville, I get some reefer trucks, and we'll just pump snow and move it around. I guarantee yeah. it. That's wild. Yeah, absolutely. And you asked about like how raindrops. Yeah, that can was my curiosity effect. too. Like, in, in at, a, at the at the onset of an event, like you're out in the water. You start getting that little slow, drizzly rain. Yeah, in the summer, like that's ping, ping. It's a great thing. So yeah. I will kind of watch uh, summertime. It's warmer, of course. Uh, watch when these maybe these tropic systems may be moving into the area. Uh, and if, if I'm off, I'll have my waterproof backpack stuff, and I want to be on the water. I want to be when it starts because when that water starts to fall, that precipitation, it starts to oxygenate that water. 
and I've seen it yes. many, wow. many times where that oxygenated rich water, those fish start to get active. You got plenty of bugs. And I, I have I've had some amazing hour, hour and a half window when it first starts that like Dude, the fishing's on. And they can't help it. It's like sugar. Yeah. They're just consuming the extra exactly. oxygen. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's those, insane. Yeah. So those that, big raindrops yeah. are also knocking bugs off trees. They do that as well. So oh, man, all these yeah. little... Any, yeah. any terrestrials, yeah. when it rains in the summer, Boom, hoppers, done. ants, all these flush They're done. Beyond my other fascination is the interconnectedness of everything. It's yeah. just fascinating. It, it, oh, is. it is. It really, really is. So I, I like it. Like when there's... And it's looking pretty good. I'm like, I'm out of here. You know, Tanya knows I'm going to go probably somewhere on the lefty yeah. somewhere and I'm going to be there in the water when it starts raining. That's too funny. Well, now this makes more sense. T Grimes, Thomas Grimes and my friends, man, he'd always oh, hit yeah. me up. It's about to rain. You know, when mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, he wants yeah. to, he wants to be in that window, yeah. Yeah. right? That and initial then, yeah. onset. Window. Well, and certain species right. may react different too. Sure. So. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other thing you have when always it rains yeah. is after it's rained for a little bit, especially in like say Scott's Creek right here in Silva, if you get run off of asphalt, the temperature of the stream can change. The the temperature yeah. of the rain falling can warm or cool the Poor river. Scott's Creek, man. You know, any of that stuff affects what the fish <laughs> are going to do. That's Obviously, right. snow runoff, that's going to maybe decrease. Like, if we get snow Saturday and then it melts, the temperature of the stream is going to go down. It's fascinating. That's awesome. Um, so, there's all those little... Trees being dormant or not, sucking water out of the water table, mm -hmm. how quick streams drain. Well, you know, the yeah. eastern hemlock, right, and the effect of temperature on the streams. Yeah. You know. yeah. Um, that, that, to me, was always wild because... You know, I also have a hydrology background, too. And, okay. the, and, you know, the fascination with water is always there. I prefer rain over snow as it when it's getting, but that water is constantly moving. You go yeah. to bed, it's still there. It's moving. Now, yeah. the CFS might drop, it might rise, it might flood, it might not, but that water is still going. So you for a tree species to goes. alter temperature that way yeah. is fascinating because I can barely, you know, get my hot water at home correct when it's running, let alone an entire stream by one or two degrees. Yeah. Mother Nature, man. <laughs> These fine-tuned things over time. Oh, yeah. For it's, sure. It's crazy how it... Well, we need to do a fishing report. We, we, we do. But is there any way that people... <laughs> we need to do people, a weather report <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah. And so, so obviously, we you mentioned about you know the weather sensor, the data. So if someone wants to go look currently here for the general area, where would they go to do that? you got to access my website behind a paywall, right? <laughs> Another paywall. <laughs> No, uh, I got many handles, but the easiest is MTNWX or localyocalweather.com, um, A28WX. I just pretty much bought them all. I nice. Know, probably have way too many domain names. But um, there's a fundraiser page. Uh, reach out to us. I'm segueing into putting more stations out into trailheads. Panther Town is next, probably. Um, nice. Jason and Chris over there, they're, they're talking with us, and we're, we're excited. We're good friends with them. Um, so we are really, we, it's the royal we. It's just me. It's just making myself look bigger. But I am very interested in doing some sensors or maybe working with you all to yeah, expand any kind of network. And I can't think of it's just you all, right? No, all single dream oh, catchers no, or be, others. Yeah, I mean, it'd be yeah. tons of people there's, that there's, would there's want There's got to be a small little community yeah. here that would yeah. want that. That's right. And then I think, you know, the general public is going to benefit for that when they're planning a yeah. trip. They're going to be like, oh, let's go check out the website Man, and see it. what what's I'll, happening here and there. It's my new job. I'll just fundraise weather stations and I'll y'all pay me to maintain them. All right, there you go. There you go, man. There you man, go. I remember back in the day, man, Power 90.5 with weather powered by local yokel. Local yokel weather. That's it, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. He was talking about that earlier about yeah. how the uh, yeah. Yeah, if guy you there. smile like I am now, that's I it. sound so much happier than I am. <laughs> yeah, right? like yeah. when you're talking, you got to do yeah. certain I'm things. I'm trying <laughs> to fake it. <laughs> you got Jack Nicholson over there. You know, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Your I don't know. That's probably one of the better ones I was debating yeah. that the other day. Yeah, that's yeah. The <laughs> so I guess it is time there for a fishing report brought to you by Norvice. Norvice. Norvice is awesome. You ever heard of Norvice? Like that water. Yeah, it's it's constant. It's constantly it's constant. It's constantly it's maintaining. Constantly making us just, have to just go like to the you said, man. You know, oh, so it goes we're up, we're down. Not on the podcast, it's overplaying the water. Yeah, I've, I've got yeah. it dialed in, man. Man. He has that button for the fishing report. And Look at there. Yeah. Got everybody's got to go to the bathroom. Bathroom. Got temperature. So you, you've so got a mic down on the tuck right now. Yeah, that's right. right. And it's feeding yeah. in. Yeah. That's right. Oh, man. That's right, man. Live. That's right. 2022, mm -hmm. y'all. You know it, man. So, you know, March is our roller coaster month for weather. That's how I describe it all the time. It's, it's just a roller coaster. So, Lion or lamb? What are that, we thinking? Well, about? so my daughter pointed out, she's eight, and says, Daddy? March seems to come in like a lamb instead of a lion. And mm. it did. It totally did. You know, and then the party was over this week. Right. I mean, we 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 ran into the 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 wall of water, especially overnight. I, my rain gauge isn't working. I don't know if you noticed on my uh, you know, I didn't station. even look at mine today. I did. How much rain we get? Yeah, nowhere. I I noticed. It's all good. 
<laughs> um, I didn't want to say anything. I'm glad you brought it up. We'll talk afterwards. <laughs> this is, guys, by the way, sorry, it took about an hour to get to this. This is an intervention. <laughs> um, you know, roughly over the past, uh, oh my God, today's Wednesday, um, we've gotten over about two and a half inches. Okay. You know, region wide, Highlands raked in about a four and four and a half. Yeah. Oh, wow. But that's a bat in the eye, normal event up there. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, fishing, everything was fishable all day yesterday. People were crushing fish on the West Fork all, all the way up till dark. I mean, Hendrickson's all the way till you just couldn't see. Um, small ones. But um, then the, the front came through last night, the main the main piece of the front, because it seemed like it was in a couple parts, but um, layman's terms. Yeah. I feel you really intimidated yeah. talking about this yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> so um, We called them acts, but go ahead. Okay, yeah. sweet. So uh, the second act came through and just totaled everything. So, you know, we wake up this morning, everything's a little too high. Um, you know, you actually could have still waited the tuck if you knew the routes. Yeah, if you had the spots. Yeah. Like if you knew the rocks, you could you could totally go out there and wait it. But it was best to kind of give it a give it a break. But you know, tomorrow everything should be fine. You know, we we're talking about the trees. You know, they're waking up and sucking water out of the table now, and um, it's it's going to drain quick. Fishing's going to be returned. However, the fishing will be good, but the weather might not. It's supposed to get chilly. So. Chili. That's chili. my segue over here to chili Preston. Chili bills, chili bills. So what's happening this weekend? Yeah, it's going to be cold. Um, what's the highs? In the low to mid 40, you know, upper 30s Saturday. It's been going down, trending down. Snow Friday night to Saturday morning for mainly the Tennessee line. Uh, it'll be a northwest flow snow. I'm kind of putting on my forecasting hat here. Yeah, that um, sounds great. Um, you know, it's be a classic windy day. So down the valleys in Silva on the Tuck, it'll probably 10, 15 mile an hour winds out of northwest. Mm. You know, if you're Cold. if you're up on the Tennessee line, you could be gusting to 40 mile an hour. So, yeah, the wind chills would be down the upper 20s, low 30s, overnight lows back down to the teens. Sunday Whew. is somewhat of a saving grace, no pun intended, because we'll be back in the 50s <laughs> under sunshine. Man, it is like so, watching the so, TV. Dude. I know that's <laughs> like amazing, really dude. That's, hey, that's Don Conley, baby. <laughs> that's smooth, awesome. baby. I was actually smooth. reading along on your website. That's right smooth. Right. Yeah. Now that was awesome. Now, based on that, can you can you kind of set us up for the rest of the month? I mean, not like that play by play. Do you, would, do you think we're going to be relatively mild, uh, maybe milder oh, than sure. normal? Yeah, so or we um. So that's another thing too. We are able to synoptically larger scale, yeah. not detailed. Um, be pretty accurate. The Mets. I'm not a Met, right? I'm not a meteorologist. Um, but the 8 to 10-day outlook is warmer than average. Um, and so some people will see bright red and think, oh, my God, it's a heat wave. But it's above average. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not 80s in March. It'll just be 60s flirting with back in the 70s. Okay. Um, but for you know the take-homes, yeah, your AC and your heat are probably not going to run for the next two weeks. It yeah. depends. Sweet. Um, Except for Saturday, it's going to run like crazy. Yeah. That heat is going to be kicking. Use that fire. I'm also body. an accountant by trade, so we shut our down. Put <laughs> <laughs> <Nope. laughs> a couple sweaters on. Yeah. Daddy don't care. Oh, Think gosh. about the Ukrainians. Oh, there you go. But that, that's that's great to know. That we, so if you're thinking about coming to the area, you know March is yeah. it's going to be a great month to be here. It, is. it always is. I but mean, yeah. I tell you what we can do. Um, I mean, we maybe we should talk about this afterwards. But parting through time, if you have clients that are curious. Uh, have them reach out to me or you all reach out to me on behalf and we can give you a week or two outlook. Um, I don't know. We definitely I, need to if, figure something out. If I get it wrong, I'm not, you know, <laughs> not a fault. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's right. All right. There's the always, disclaimer. there's always a little disclaimer back in the corner. Thank you. Um, but yeah, we could definitely help out. We do it all the time for folks who are visiting or, yeah. or weddings or stuff like that. All right. Last That's question. Awesome, man. We're going to make this the last question because cool. we're already at an hour and you might really make some people mad with your answer. here. Mm. So farmer's almanac, True or not? Like, is it is it accurate or not? Counter question: Do you believe in the woolly worm? <laughs> <laughs> and I yes, did. yes, I do. I was about to say <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> woolly worm, <laughs> woolly worm, and acorns. I, 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 I absolutely love weather folklore. Yeah, I have a list. I always That's add awesome. to it as I talk to locals and learn. Yeah, um, I mean, learn from the best. They they have been here for hundreds of years. They know. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, you can always just use the weather rock to figure things out. Yeah, <laughs> the persimmon seeds. The, right. the weather rock is just as good as the as the percent board, man. That's right. Snowboard. That's right. <laughs> the snow, thank you. That's the right. Snowboard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Well, man, thanks for coming That's on. Awesome, oh, you man. guys are great. We, we might yes. have to have you back a that few times. You, you walk so. in, you meet these guys, you think, okay, this is a ragtag group, but this is a professional <laughs> setup, right? I'm, I'm I'm talking into mics I've never talked to. So, Western <laughs> needs a, a donation for their program. This, uh, is, this is putting into shame. This do, is do, Dr. Livingston at uh, WCU in the political science department, he, he had a saying. Now, Mr. Collins, that's a, a Buford voice. Right? <laughs> Mr. Collins, 
thing about politics is perception is, is real. reality. Oh my god, dude, who said that? That that's Livingston. He Dr. said Livingston. that. Yeah, I love that. I live it's by true. that quote. Yeah, everything. He didn't obviously the create weather, that. The I mean, weather, climate, everything. Yeah. News. That's right. It's Perception true. is real. I heard that somewhere. I'm glad. I was going to boo the whole, like, you know, Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott, kind of like take 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to steal an Inception uh, style. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, Thanks, folks. Guys. Hatches. I appreciate it. Lots of, lots of bugs to fish this month. So, come on up. One more time. Your website? MTNWX, localyocalweather.com. There you go, man. Preston, thanks for joining us, man. Thank you all. It's been a blast. That wraps up another exciting and informative episode of the TuckCast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service located at 3 Depot Street, Bryson City, North Carolina and 530 West Main Street, Silver, North Carolina in Waynesville. Be sure to visit www.tuckflyshop.com for stream flow information, book a guided trip, or even shop for your favorite Tuckasegee Fly Shop gear. Follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasegee Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and on YouTube at Tuckasegee Fly Shop. If you have a question or comment, feel free to send those to info at tuckflyshop.com or give us a call 1-828-488-3333. For Coach Dell Diesel Collins, Bobby the Bearded Wonder Bennett, I'm Shannon, Big Mess Messer. We'll catch you next week. Be sure to catch a few fish out there, won't you? Y'all take care. <laughs>